Bloodhound PY, this time on Practical Exploitation. Welcome to Practical Exploitation, the breakdown on breaking in. I'm your host, Rob Fuller, but you can call me Muix. Today, we're going into bloodhound.py, or PY, or whatever you want to call it. So, this is a really cool iteration of Bloodhound. If you haven't checked out Bloodhound, there are blog posts, ad, not like there's everywhere. Like, just Google Bloodhound um, uh, AD or Active Directory, because there are actual Bloodhounds that you'll get first on Google Images. Um, so Bloodhound's amazing. Um, you have the ingesters, which will pull the data, which are um, are written in C-sharp and PowerShell, um, usually. And then you have the Neo4j database that is a graphing database, um, or graph links, or however you say it. Um, and then you have the interface for Bloodhound itself, which takes out all of the relational data inside of the, the Neo4j and does queries on it and shows you to in a graphical format. Today, we're just gonna be going over the Bloodhound Python version, the ingester for Python, that's actually really cool. And I use it a lot because personally, using PowerShell or C-sharp on a, on a victim um, or on a, on a um, box you've popped, unfortunately has the the resulting aspects of it showing up in EDR solutions or PowerShell logs or anything like that. This um, Python script can be pivoted, it can be proxied, it can do a lot of things. So let's take a look. So first of all, Bloodhound is on github.com or github.com forward slash bloodhound ad blood slash bloodhound. Um, you can find all the details on how to use it and, and what this is for. And because I, I wanted to talk about this first, just because you don't really get much out of bloodhound.py if you're not going to use the Bloodhound interface. So Bloodhound Pi by Fox IT. Um, this is a Python version, basically, of the ingester, like I said. And we're just going to go out and, and figure out how to install it. So I have my notes as normal over here. I've actually, if you've, if you've been paying attention and following along, this is now Joplin instead of Cherry Tree. Uh, I believe Cherry Tree um, dropped uh, or is an archived project or is it, it's just gone. So Joplin is what I'm using now. Uh, thanks to uh, Steve, Dave uh, for that suggestion. And so let's get to it. So first of all, you can do pip install Bloodhound. I don't recommend doing just pip install Bloodhound because Bloodhound or Python 2.6 and 2.7 are on the way out, and most of the stuff is in pip or Python 3. So pip 3 install Bloodhound will get you there. I had all kinds of errors trying to install it with um, just pip, so let's make a modification there. So it's three. I don't have Docker on this machine, but Docker is a really cool way. And I've seen, um, there's actually a Donut who is in our chat right now uh, for Twitch. If you do, haven't seen on Twitch, you should definitely check us out. Um, uh, check me out on Twitch because that's where I stream everything while I'm recording. So Donut actually and a few other people I used to work with um, had this really cool setup where they would Dockerize all of their tools on their stuff and just use it there and get the data out of it so you never have to worry about dependencies. Anyways, so this is a way to run in Docker if you want or straight up get clone it and you can put it there. I prefer the pip3 install because it just works usually uh, and I don't have to really worry about it. So let's just run bloodhound python and here are the arguments. So it's pretty straightforward. The collection methods, I'll go into that in a second. Username and password. Um, and these are actually pretty important. So um, let's go with uh, username and password first. So bloodhound python, you'll notice that it has the dash python now um, instead of just bloodhound. So username, I'm gonna do not an admin at Sitting duck dot info. I'm gonna do domain sitting duck dot info. And I actually actually remove this if I need to. Um, I like to put it in there just because I know that that's the user that it's going to, but I don't have to have it. Uh, I always like it verbose. And let's talk about collection methods. So collection methods are how or what the bloodhound uh, process collects. So 
group, local admin, session, trust, and um, our default is all previous, so group, local admin, session, trust. I don't like default because then it talks to other systems. So session data is really useful. However, and that's really how many people get um, connections on Bloodhound to see where you can connect to and what it is. So let me describe a session a little bit more. So when a user is logged into a system, um, they create a session on that system. And you can actually query with net session um, who's on those systems. Now this is great for identifying where, comp where domain admins or, or highly privileged users are. Um, local admin, you should definitely check, uh, look into, um, but previous to, I think it was Windows 2016 with a patch or Windows 2019 um, and other patches for Windows 10, you used to be able to query all the local admins for a machine remotely without having to be an admin on that box. Um, groups, you understand. Trusts, probably you understand. Those are all the things. Um, anyways, there's a lot of different collection methods. I, I suggest looking into each one. ACLs are certainly important, but DC only is the one I go with almost always. Because all I want to do is talk to the domain controller when I'm doing this. Usually, I'd, if I'm pivoting it or I'm, if I'm trying to hit it from another box or, or I don't have resolution correctly, uh, this is this is the best option because all it does is hit one domain controller, queries all the data that you need and, and drops out. Again, it's not going to get you session data, it's not going to get you local admin, but it w or who's logged on, um, but it does get you a lot of um, good information that you can start at least going with. So let's do DC only, and then I'm going to do the host. So DC1 uh, 192.168.80.10. Okay. It did not work because, oh, because there's no host needed. So DC host, there we go. So my password for non-admin and it's failed. And this is because it's trying to resolve a domain, the sitting duck info to my, my resolver and not the actual domain controller. So if I do ns for the domain controller, ns, and try again, it found all the domain controllers, um, or it found the domain controllers this time and actually did it, but I need to give it an actual DC and IPs don't work. So now I can give it dc1.sittingduck.info. Put my password in again queried all the main controllers and verbose. Here's another reason why I like doing it verbose. If you look at the SID, this SID is something I use in silver tickets, in in golden tickets all the time, and like having that data just available to me um, in my logs is really important to me. So 40 or four seconds total to pull all of the things for this stuff. And if you look, oops, uh, it drops it in the current working directory, which means that you have a bunch of JSON everywhere. So I'm going to just rm-rf.star.json. Oops, probably not r. I'm going to make a directory called loot. I'm going to cd into that directory, run this thing again, and be super loud on my domain. But it's not really actually all that loud. So querying all this information is, is really, really um, not very loud at all. Um, there are very few detections that I've seen come out for finding this stuff. Now, detecting Bloodhound on disk, um, I've seen a bunch of EDRs have that, but not, um, actually doing it um, from the event logs in, in Active Directory, not so much. Um, I know ATA, Microsoft ATA actually had alerts on it, um, and I believe ATP or the new ATA um, actor Azure stuff does it anyways so let's get into the why so the standard user has all kinds of abilities to query the domain for all kinds of information and you don't have to be elevated now um, it has tons of information about ACLs and all that stuff we've already talked about and you can find different paths from your current user to that you can mark owned users and all kinds of stuff so this is a really amazing tool. However, 
Um, there are some downfalls to it, and I'll, I'm going to show you one of them real quick. So I was really lucky because this was in. I am on the same like domain, or or I have the same network as the target. If that's not the case, I'll have to pivot it. The reason I like um, Bloodhound is because I can, or Bloodhound.py is because I can do that just that. So let's see if I get. I still have my shell. If I go and um, background it if I use uh, expl uh, nope I haven't used this in a long time I server socks for set serve host to 127001 set serve port to 9050 run and then uh, set Route add zero and then through session one. So I've added a route. I'm now going through that session to these networks. Now let's say that I didn't have, if I didn't have that um, connectivity, um, I can use proxy chains to go over that connection. So you can see that I'm connecting through my proxy. I'm going over it. It's hitting 80.10, which is the domain controller. And it will do the exact same lookups and pull the same stuff over this connection, which is pretty amazing. So you can't really do that with bloodhound.py or blood regular bloodhound. You can't really do that with PowerShell bloodhound. Um, not very easily, at least. Um, and so that's why I really like this tool because I can go over the session and, and it's all just network data, so all the EDRs are pretty blind to this. Now, I did want to pull up one thing about this, is that it does have a DNS timeout issue. And if you look, um, a lot of, actually, more than this one person is having this issue. I've had it plenty of times. Dirk Jans knows about it, he's added the enhancement thing, and this is my workaround for it. So. I use DNS Chef, which is a malware research tool, but it's really super handy. So in Bloodhound, um, it does all of the resolutions via D uh, UDP. And so proxying over a TCP connection like Meterpreter doesn't work. And so um, you can say DNS TCP, which will kind of works sometimes and kind of work doesn't work other times or you can I'm going to add a new terminal here or tab here I can sudo up so I, I can get clone put DNS chef in here I think I already have all the requirements for it yeah and so DNS Chef has a bunch of options. And what I do is I say um, fake IP the domain controller 192.168.80.10. So fake IP that. So it's going to respond to everything with that fake IP. Now I go back here, and I take out the name server. So now it's going to go and do UDP out to the internet again. And Sitting Duck is, is a valid domain, but it does not have references to the actual domain controller. So if I proxy change that, oops, remove the dot help, you can see that I'm still getting that DNS problem. So what else do I have to change? I have to change my resolver. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll just do it here. So I can change. I can add my resolver. One two seven zero zero one, and that should, should. Okay, that's SRV records. Uh, why isn't there was one? Where is it? It was supposed to respond to everything. Oh, that's just A records. It's changed. Anyways. 
So there's a way. There is a way with um, with DNS Chef to respond to everything. I don't know why it's not doing that for SRV records right now, but you can see that it it did try. And what I could do is in a file. What does the INI look like? Okay, so so for an SRV record, I need to do that. Okay, so now in DNS Chef. I and I SRV records. What's the one we needed? That one. So let's say star 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 star. That all goes to dc1.setting.info. Dash file dnschef.ini. There we go. Okay, so I could have removed all this other stuff, but let's try it again. Boom. So it did do the resolutions for these two and got the DC1. Then it queried for DC1, and it's working. So that's DNS um, Chef plus Blue, um, Bloodhound Pie. Um, it worked wonderfully because um, I, I cut it out before it finished, but it's definitely it's definitely working. Um, it the great thing about those combinations is that I can do it over a, a proxy, but the DNS queries itself that it needs to do, and you can do this for any tool. The DNS queries that it needs to do is all local, and I can spoof them. And that's great. That way, it's actually just doing the TCP connections that it actually needs for the query information um, directly to the main controller over the proxy, over an interpreter, over all the things. So that's it. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments below. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that a little bell icon so that you can um, be alerted anytime these videos go live. And everybody's going to make fun of me for saying that, but I, I, I think that it, it's... Um, it's really important, and I like seeing alerts from all of the other YouTubers out there um, and and seeing when they, their content goes live and stuff and getting alerts on my stuff. So uh, hit me up on, on patreon.com forward slash Mubix if you liked or enjoyed this show. Um, every dollar, cent, penny, uh, $5 helps a lot to making this show actually go live as many times as I can, uh, as fast as I can. I hope that everyone is staying safe. Um, this was recorded during COVID. If you're watching it later, I hope you still are safe. But um, uh, I, I genuinely want everyone to um, stay safe and be well and do all kinds of stuff. And I just said be well, which reminds me of Demolition Man. But um, be well, Officer Huxley. All right, that's it. I'm Mubix. I'll be hacking until the cows come home. Take it easy. Thanks for supporting Hack 5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.